In this video, I'll be showing you a shocking but very important interview that can help you in building wealth that will last for generations to come. Listen carefully, don't skip. I'm going to explain everything at the end of the clip. Just a quick intro. Paul Tudor Jones is an American hedge fund manager, philanthropist, and investor. He is widely recognized as one of the most successful and influential traders in the financial industry. Jones gained significant recognition and made substantial profits by correctly predicting major market moves, including the stock market crash of 1987 and correctly predicting the decade-long post-2008 financial crisis stock market rally. So let's watch. In a more intermediate basis, we have the financial cycle. The financial cycle, which is what we kind of look at internally, is the combination of the historical debt and asset valuation boom bust. Right. So if you think about post-COVID, we had this massive increase in debt, massive increase in equity valuation. It creates this boom in the financial cycle. That's happened in 1990. That happened in 2000. That happened in 2008. Our financial cycle, the peak of total debt growth plus stock market valuation occurred in September of 2021. Historically, it's about a two year lag when that really, really bites and you go into recession. That would be third quarter this year. Okay. There's a good chance based on our most recent right. financial episodes, there's a really good chance that we're going to be on the verge of looking like or actually so going into recession, recession. But you think that the stock market's higher because it's looking out 12 months after? Because I think, again, if I just think about this year and I think about 06, 07, 08, it doesn't mean that the stock market cannot go higher as the economy decelerates. If, if you just think about it, if that was the last, if that was the last uh, hike right. that we just had, the playbook's real simple. Six months from now, stocks are 10% higher. Six months from now, uh, interest rates are generally 50 to 70 basis points lower. There's a halcyon period post last hike. Paul Tudor Jones highlights a generational wealth building opportunity by highlighting the historical relationship between debt and asset valuation boom bust cycles. He believes that excessive debt levels in the economy can lead to unsustainable asset price booms, followed by severe busts. And this is a widely known phenomena in theory. According to Jones, these cycles occur in a predictable pattern and can be understood by studying historical data, and thus provide investors the opportunity to make rational investment decisions at the right time. Jones highlights the 2020 to 2022 debt accumulation as a key driver of economic growth in the U.S. He argues that during periods of economic expansion, individuals, corporations, and governments tend to take on increasing levels of debt. This debt fuels asset price appreciation and creates a sense of prosperity. However, as debt levels reach unsustainable levels as of the end of 2022, the risks of a market correction or collapse increase. And that's exactly what investors are witnessing right now. Same thing happened in the 1930s, the 1980s, 2001, and 2008. But he says that these crashes are always followed by even bigger asset prices appreciation cycles. Jones says interest rates are peaking in the U.S. and will start decreasing in the next six months. And that's the time when investors should start accumulating stocks to build generational wealth. Because you cannot become a millionaire by earning 10% annual return. You need to buy during crashes when prices are down 30 to 40% to change your fortunes. Historically, the S&P 500 only provides a 10% annual return. There are multiple examples of multiple billionaires in front of you in terms of how they got rich from virtually nothing. Robert Kiyosaki became a millionaire from the 2008 crash, and Warren Buffett became a billionaire by buying stocks in every stock market crash. So, let's discuss the top three stocks that billionaire Paul Tudor Jones is buying right now as he predicts a new bull run starting in the next six months. The first stock that Jones is buying is CVS Health Corporation, ticker symbol CVS. CVS Health is a leading healthcare company with an extensive network of pharmacies and medical clinics in the United States. 
CVS is currently trading near $67, down 30% on a year-over-year -year basis. But Jones is doubling down because now is the time to buy this beaten down stock. Jones has almost doubled his holdings in Q1 of 2023 from 259,000 to 459,000. CVS is rated A plus on the basis of profitability factor, meaning there's nothing to worry about regarding the future profitability trend of the company. And the stock price is beaten down because investors are opting to reduce exposure to stocks to lock higher savings returns in banks. But this is a poor strategy as interest rates have peaked and savings rates will decrease and smart money will soon pouring into stocks. That's why both Wall Street and seeking alpha analysts have buy rating on this stock. At the current price, CVS is offering a 3.5% super secure dividend yield. CVS Health's revenue for the first three months of 2023 was $84.94 billion, up 10.8% year over year. Since the beginning of 2022 and Q1 of 2023, CVS Health has been beating analyst consensus estimates by a relatively large margin. Thanks to the company's expanding product portfolio, strong sales of consumer health products, and strong demand for medical services. CVS Health's Q2 EPS is expected to be in the $2.01 to $2.41 range, up 2.9% on average from the Q1 2023 consensus estimate. At the same time, CVS Health's non-GAAP P to E is 7.94x which is 57.36% less than the average for the sector, and 20.64% less than the average over the past five years, which is one of the factors indicating that Wall Street undervalues the company. Profitability is intact, and the dividend is super secure, so now is the time to buy CVS before smart money starts to return to the market. CVS can help you build generational wealth with an upside potential of 50% and forever dividend streams as dividends are expected to rise in the future. The next stock on our list is Colgate Palmolive Company, ticker symbol CL. Colgate was founded in 1806 by William Colgate in New York City and has survived and thrived for 217 years, including 44 recessions, 11 depressions, the Great Depression, two world wars, and inflation and interest rates of 20%. And for the last 30 years, Colgate has provided continuous positive returns despite ever-increasing dividends. Colgate is built to last and will likely outlive not just us, but our grandchildren as well. Colgate is a highly diversified company with 67% of its sales coming from outside the US. Currently, Colgate is trading near $67 and offers a dividend yield of 2.5%. Seeking Alpha has assigned an a score to its profitability metrics because Colgate has consistently delivered organic growth within its target range and has had strong pricing power in recent quarters, allowing it to post the strongest growth and profitability in years. Paul Tudor Jones owns $34 million worth of stock that he bought in the last quarter. Colgate's fundamentals are expected to hold up well in the 2023 recession and then accelerate in the coming years. Colgate is one of the lowest risk and least volatile ways to potentially beat the market long term, while enjoying a higher and much safer yield. Colgate is trading at a significant discount given the current market dynamics of fear and uncertainty. but. CL is a super secure investment opportunity with 200 plus years of history of providing returns. The third stock on our list is Philips 66, ticker symbol PSX. PSX is the third largest holding in Jones's portfolio, and he's not alone in buying this gem of a stock. Another billionaire investor with a 30-year track record of earning 30% average annual returns, named Jim Simons, also bought PSX stock worth $100 million. PSX has a buy rating from Wall Street and SA analysts. PX is also rated buy on the basis of strong quant score. Analysts also expect strong profitability and positive price performance to continue in the coming months, reflected by their assignment of A grade to profitability and B grade to price momentum. Philips 66 operates as an energy manufacturing and logistics company in the United States, the United Kingdom, Germany, and internationally. It operates through four segments, midstream, chemicals, refining, and marketing and specialties. There have been years and years of underinvesting in energy infrastructure. 
crack spreads, which are the difference between what a refiner pays for oil and then makes on the sale of the final product, have been elevated. You would be surprised to know that despite the current market cap of $43 billion, management has distributed cash worth $34 billion to shareholders in the form of dividends and buybacks. There are both tactical and long-term reasons to be an owner of Phillips 66. This name has many positives, including its strong dividend, shareholder-oriented management, leading refining assets, and robust chemical segment. Phillips 66 has been boosting efficiency across the organization by lowering headcount, improving the balance sheet, and making technological strides in refining itself. The company's focus on delivering to shareholders is admirable, and it continues to refine and improve its organization and assets to ensure that it can continue for the long haul.